make your household the richest language atmosphere you can for yourself and your kids. Hello and welcome to Live Your Language Tips and Inspiration for Parents Who Are Raising Their Children in a Non-Native Language. I'm Stephanie, a PhD student in second language acquisition focusing on parenting in a foreign language. In my last video, I provided an update and in the update I discussed how I really regret that I have not been looking up words the same way I used to when I first began raising my children in my non-native language of French. So today, partially as a reminder for myself, but also for you guys, I wanted to rehash the reasons why it's so important to make sure that we're looking up all the words that we don't know. And also reading this fantastic book by Christine Jerrigan called Family Language Learning. And in this book, she has interviewed tons of parents who are raising their children in a foreign language. And for those of you who don't know, that's raising children in a language where the target language is not the majority language or is not the language of the community. So she's interviewed a lot of families who are doing what we're doing. So reading this book has really got me thinking about how non-native speakers have to do things a little bit differently and why it's so important that we make sure that we're looking everything up. One of the observations that she makes is that a lot of successful families keep a dictionary really handy. She also says that if you don't know the word or you aren't able to look it up right away, you shouldn't be very hard on yourself. You can use the strategy of circumlocution, which is just a way to get around the word that you need but still make yourself understood. I can also say that when I've had to correct myself after the fact, after having used the wrong word for a long time, my kids are usually very forgiving. They just kind of accept the new word as the new word and go on with their life. Well, I have plenty to say on this topic, so let's dive right in. The first reason it's so important to look up all the words you don't know, or as many as possible, is that first of all, it allows us to somewhat compensate for being a non-native speaker. We know that non-native speakers have a smaller vocabulary compared to native speakers, and as a result, the kids who we're raising in that non-native language will have a smaller vocabulary as well. By looking up the words we don't know, we compensate for that in a way by giving them a richer vocabulary. So for example, by looking up the word for fire truck, instead of saying a truck that puts out fires or extinguishes fires, they'll now have that word to use in the future to reference something. Provide them with the word for say snuggle instead of get very close to. Especially those household words that sometimes are a lot more difficult for us to, to find but are nevertheless a part of everyday life for them. I've also noticed that a lot of times in my household when my kids switch over to English it's because they don't know the word in French. So by making sure that you're bolstering up their vocabulary as well, hopefully later down the line, they don't have to switch to another language to make sure that they are understood. So we know that non-native speakers have a smaller vocabulary naturally, which means that we'll use fewer words. And this smaller vocabulary affects the quality of the language output that we're providing for our children, which is then their input. So by looking up the words, we're giving them richer language input, which ultimately will help them down the road in becoming productive bilinguals. The next reason why it's really important to look up the words you don't know is that you can really take advantage of this environment to help your own language input. This context, raising a child as a non-native speaker, is really unique in that it actually doesn't include one of the most debilitating, in my opinion, environmental factors of learning a language in an immersion setting. This effective factor of being really self-conscious and really stressed when talking to native speakers. I remember when I was studying abroad in France, all I had to do was mail a letter. And I looked up the words for stamp, I looked up the phrases that I thought I needed, but when I got there, I was just so consumed with anxiety about asking the people at the counter to mail this letter for me. That is one of the biggest barriers of language progress in that is that we don't use as many words as we normally would. We don't have as many opportunities to practice as we normally would because we are too scared. This does not exist with your kids. They will happily wait while you look up a word most of the time. And they're very forgiving, like I said, when you don't know the word. So this is a really unique opportunity to learn a language, to learn words that you use every day in the context that you use them with somebody who's willing to wait while you look up a word, which would not always be the case if you were speaking to a native speaker abroad. So I really believe that by looking up these words, you can take advantage of this unique opportunity 
to make sure that your own language is improving as well. Foreign language parents do not have those words that are so crucial for um, interacting with our children, and these are household words. The sink, the stopper, step stool, um, pacifier, onesie. These are the words that are just so hard to find when you're looking for resources in a foreign language. So by looking up these words, these words you use every single day, you can bolster and broaden your own vocabulary in a way that would really not be possible if you were studying abroad or even if you were in a homestay, in most cases in a foreign country. Another reason why it's really great to look up all the words you don't know is that it's never been easier than now to look up a new word. I remember the days when we had to flip through dictionaries to find words that we didn't know. But nowadays at home, you have um, apps on your phone, you have the Google Home and other smart devices, and you have dictionaries at your fingertips. It's never been easier than it is now to look up words you don't know. And lastly, one of the reasons why it's really great to look up all the words you don't know is that it provides an excellent example for your children to look up words that they don't know one day. By looking things up yourself, you can really instill in your family, in your household, this attitude of lifelong learning and give them the resources for what to do when they themselves don't know the answer. What can you do if you don't know the answer? Well, I've actually gotten to the point now that I'm four and a half years in with my oldest son, where he will ask our smart device how to say certain words in French. I really love this because it shows him that there's another way to communicate without having to switch to English. I really hope that one day, by seeing me look up words that I didn't know, admitting that I didn't know everything as well, that he can also do that more easily and maybe at home when he's reading one day and he comes across a word he doesn't know, he'll go ahead and ask Google to define that word. In conclusion, looking up words has so many excellent benefits. As foreign language parents, we are in a unique position to learn language in a way that is not really available to a lot of other people. And it's even better that we're doing it alongside our children. By looking up the words we don't know, we enrich our vocabulary, we enrich the vocabulary of our children, we show them that looking up a word that you don't know is not a weakness, and we give them the resources they need to one day look up the words they don't know in the future. Also, it's never been easier than it is today to look up words you don't know, so take advantage of that and make your household the richest language atmosphere you can for yourself and your kids. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked what you heard, please make sure to subscribe and leave me a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on this topic. Do you do the same thing? If not, why? And what are your strategies for looking up the words you don't know? I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.